Today's topic is Meniere's disease. Meniere is a disorder of the inner ear that is characterized by a spinning sensation, hearing loss, ringing in the ear, or tinnitus, and a feeling of pressure in the ear. The inner ear is mostly responsible for hearing and balance. In most cases, only one ear is affected. However, over time, it may extend to both ears. Hearing loss is progressive and can permanently lead to a complete loss of hearing. The disorder affects both men and women, can occur at any age, but mostly occurs in people in their 40s and 50s. Meniere's disease is a chronic condition that has no cure and that can affect your social life, productivity, and the overall quality of life. The odds of Meniere's disease is higher for people of white ethnicity, obese, and women. Causes The cause of the condition is still not understood, but one popular theory suggests that the condition may be due to an abnormal buildup of fluid in the inner ear. Meniere's disease may likely be influenced by both genetic and environmental factors. About 9% of cases run in the family. The environmental factor that may contribute to Meniere's disease include allergies, immune diseases, viral infections, head trauma, symptoms, vertigo, a spinning sensation that begins and ends spontaneously and that reoccurs. Episodes of vertigo generally last for 20 minutes to a few hours, but not more than 24 hours. Severe vertigo can be accompanied by nausea, vomiting, and sweating. Feeling of pressure or fullness in the affected ear. Ringing, buzzing, or whistling sound in the ear, also known as tinnitus. Hearing loss, loss of balance, a headache. Diagnosis and treatment. Diagnosis. If you are feeling the symptoms associated with the disorder, your doctor will order a test to evaluate your balance and hearing, and probably rule out other conditions that may be causing your symptoms. Hearing assessment may include an audiometry test. This test is used to determine how much sound you can detect at various volumes and pitches, and how well you can make a distinction between words that sound similar. Balance tests are used to assess the functions of the inner ear. People with the condition will usually have a smaller balance response in one of their ears. The test may include Electronostogmography test. Balance functions are evaluated by assessing eye movements. This is possible because the balance sensors in the inner ear are connected with muscles that control eye movement. In the ENT test, electrodes are placed around your eyes to detect eye movement while both hot and cold waters are pushed into your ear canal. Electrocochleography test, or ECOG, used to measure the electrical activity in the inner ear. This is used to check if a problem of abnormal buildup of fluids exists in the ear. Rotary chair testing. This uses eye movement to measure the inner ear function. You sit in a chair that is controlled by a computer and that stimulates your ears. You will have your eye movement carefully recorded as the chair moves. Vestibular evoked myogenic potential, or VEMP testing, that shows the sensitivity of the vestibule in your inner ear. This is done by measuring your eye reaction to abrupt movement. Posturography testing that helps to assess the part of your balance system that you rely on the most and the one that causes problems. This may include vision, inner ear functions, and skin sensations. Conditions such as a brain tumor or multiple sclerosis that has a similar problem with Meniere's disease may be ruled out by carrying out blood tests or imaging tests. Treatment. No cure exists for Meniere's disease, but medications, surgery, diet, lifestyle changes, physical therapy, and counseling may be used to manage the condition. Medications to reduce the severity of vertigo episodes, such as motion sickness and anti-nausea medications, can be prescribed by your doctor. Non-invasive therapies, such as rehabilitation, use of hearing aids, may also be effective. Surgery may be performed if the vertigo episodes are debilitating and severe and where other treatments have refused to work. This may include endolymphatic sac procedure, vestibular nerve section, and labyrinthectomy, which is performed if near total or total hearing loss has occurred in the affected ear. Lifestyle changes such as limiting salt intake and managing stress. Salt and stress can affect hearing and balance. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest videos.